Hello everyone, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Glad to have you here today. Um, today, if there's a theme on this uh, set of uh, paintings, it's sort of about historical places. I found a couple places that I think will make a nice uh, couple of paintings. And I hope you've had time to uh, check out the, uh, the reference material. It's on my website. Uh, links are below this video and they will be there when I post the final video. Um, our first painting is one from a it's a historic home called the Rollerson House um, in a little uh, unincorporated uh, village in Central Florida called Homeland, Homeland Florida. And uh, it's a place that me and some of my other artist friends have gone and painted there, plein air. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but it's a nice uh, challenge to do an architectural building and uh, try to do it uh, Instead of making it old and run down and beat up, try to make it a little more uh, modern and, and neat. Uh, the second painting we're going to do is uh, one from uh, Bass Harbor, Maine. It's called the Bass Harbor Lighthouse. It's a fairly popular uh, place. It's a place that many artists have painted. So there are tons of photographs, but I have one uh, that was uh, provided from a, uh, my uh, Photos for Artists Facebook page by Deborah Craig Shields. and. Uh, I want to thank her for that photograph, and that's what we'll be painting today um, when we do the lighthouse. So let me go back over to my computer here, and uh, I'll talk you through some of the things I did to make the uh, final painting uh, get it ready, and uh, I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, here we go. I'm on my uh, computer now, and I want to show you what we did with this house. Um, this house has been around since the late 1800s. Um, and uh, that may not be a big historical time frame for some of you watching today, but it certainly is for uh, people here in America. And uh, this is what it looked like when it was brought to the property and uh, before it was sort of restored. Um, the uh, Heritage uh, Foundation, I guess from Homeland Florida, made it look like this. And uh, this was the original photo I started with, which was pretty wide angle had an entire second building back here behind it. And uh, I cropped it down slightly. I just took some of the uh, building off on the right. So we just really focus on this main building here in the center. And it's a little bit of a challenge because it was a, a light day out. It was a clouds, cloud covered. Actually, we got rained on while I was painting. And um, it's all white. So I'm going to have to probably change the colors a little bit, change some things around. Uh, but I'll react to that when I get into the painting. Um, here's my grid, 4x5 grid, which lays nicely on an 11 by 14 painting surface, which I use for my watercolor paper. We're painting on 300 pound Fabriano Artistico uh, water, cold press watercolor paper today. And that's my usual paper, so uh, I'm very comfortable with that, and I like that paper. Uh, but this grid fits nicely on 11 by 14 paper. I did, as usual, my value map, which you see here. It's a pretty bland value map, but I try to get three values out of it and uh, try to make the sky a little lighter than the uh, building. Uh, so we do have some contrast. Actually, the, the value was very similar when I was painting it uh, live there back in March of this year. And then also I have the sketch which I always do. And this is fairly detailed. There's a big white area here on the left, you see. I think I'm going to put another window in there, which showed up on that original photo. The, they actually had it boarded over when we were there. And uh, I think it was a nice uh, addition. It'll help fill that space out. And I have one other photo to show you, which is me sitting here in the rain. I have an umbrella. Um, it's a light day, uh, but it did start raining on us. and. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do a very good job on the painting. I got water on it, but I did have an umbrella over my head and over the painting as much as possible. But um, it was uh, fairly cold uh, for Florida standards in the month of March. So uh, anyway, um, that's where we are. I'm going to go back now to my easel and uh, we'll uh, get started on this painting. Uh, I'll come back to the computer after we finish the first painting and talk you through the Bass Harbor photographs. So uh, I'll be right back to the easel in a second. Okay, I'm back and uh, we're ready to start now. I want to uh, get my uh, uh, pa paints and brushes and explain to you what they are. They're, they're pretty similar. Um, I don't change them much. 
Uh, but I want to take you through that and uh, tell you what they are, just for those of you who maybe don't know or haven't, this may be your first time. Um, my standard set of brushes, I use brushes by Sterling Edwards, and uh, these are, uh, uh, this is a uh, small bristle brush, which is uh, very nice for blending, a uh, nice blending brush. Um, I get some neat effects with that. I have a couple of flats, uh, nylon flats, a, a one inch and a, a half inch, and I have uh, three rounds. I have a number 12, number eight, number six. I have a number four round, and then I have uh, a script liner sitting in there hiding. Uh, it's a number six script liner. Um, I also have a set of these uh, <clears throat> quill mop brushes, which I started using a little bit now and then. Uh, I may use those today, I may not, but uh, have those available here. Um, my paints, let me go through the paints very quickly for you again. And uh, you probably have these memorized and know what they are, but uh, I'll go through them anyway. I have here a neutral tint. These are Mimary Blue transparent watercolors. Very beautiful paints. Neutral tint, cyan blue, ultramarine blue, primary violet bluish it's called. Crimson Lake, which is a lot like uh, Lizarin Crimson. Primary Red Magenta, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cupric Green, Sap Green, Limon Yellow, Primary Yellow, Burnt Umber, Still to Grain Brown, Auvignon Orange, and I have a few other colors over here that I experiment with. I have a um, a lamp black here and I have uh, titanium white here. I don't use those very much. I have a couple other colors I put in here to experiment with. This is a cadmium orange. This is cerulean blue. Um, I even have a little dab of uh, white gouache over here that I've been experimenting with. So those may show up in some of my future paintings, but right now I probably won't use those today. So I think that is what I wanted to show you. I want to get myself uh, zoomed in on the uh, painting here and so you can take me out of the photo and uh, we'll get going on this. Okay, and let me move it sideways a little bit so I can give you more of the, of the surface of the painting and less of the, the palette. Okay, I have also up here, you can barely see my two containers of water. I try to keep one clear and never get uh, muddy paint in it and the other one is for dirty brushes. So I'm gonna start with this uh, in the sky. Uh, the, you see the sketch, it's pretty, uh, pretty heavy on here. I have, uh, at the top of my easel, I have my photograph of the, uh, the original photo, and I also have my value map, which I've shown you. I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, kneaded eraser here and take out some of this uh, graphite that's transferred when I transfer this image to the paper so that I don't have a lot of pencil lines showing through. Um, it makes it hard for you to see it, I know, but uh, it also makes a little better painting when I'm done if I take some of these pencil lines out and don't have quite so much uh, going on in here. Uh, if you notice the uh, painting, I, I didn't put any of the, uh, the little uh, fencing here, the, uh, the, the posts that on, around this, this porch. I'm going to try to put those in by just with my uh, brush and not have to try to draw those in. I'd have a lot of graphite in these areas here where those, uh, uh, that, those, those posts are around the, that porch. So let's get going and get a little clear water going here. I'm going to just kind of sort of wet my sky very... Uh, Felicia, hello from Romania. Welcome. Glad you're here. Thanks for letting me know. Other people, if you want to let me know, I do have another computer up here by my left elbow and I can uh, actually see what you're typing in the chat window if you have a question or a comment or want to tell me where you're from that would be nice. Um, I'm in Lakeland, Florida and uh, this is one of the houses that we actually painted here on, on the location. Um, as I said it rained on us. I didn't do a very good job. I'm not very proud of that painting that I finished, but that's what happens when you go outdoors and paint, and particularly in the month of March here in Florida, it's uh, anybody's guess what the weather may be like. And uh, But we had a good day, it was a lot of fun, and we had uh, several people show up and do these paintings. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of blue in the sky. I don't want it to be uh, just totally white. I want to have some color in it. Um, 
a little more color than that maybe. Uh, and I'm gonna have a lot of cloud, uh, a lot of uh, trees on the right side. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in here and let it uh, sort of run down to the roof. And uh, over here, I'll put a little bit in. Uh, leave some room for some clouds. A little bit of a sky behind this thing. Maybe a couple clouds up there. Uh, don't need much. Keep it. I have something show through in the background there. Um, that's really about all I have to do for this sky. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit darker over here, just a little bit. Come down. I think I'm going to come down. I do have some trees I'm going to put in there on the left side as well. Uh, but so I'll just make sure I want to want to outline as much as I can the the building, the edge of the building, because that's really tells you what what is going on here. Uh, if I outline this building, if I leave it unoutlined, and this paint dries about 20 to 30 percent lighter, as all watercolors do. Uh, all right, so I'm going to cover this up with some trees. I'm going to have more trees up here, so I want to let that dry before I come back and mess around too much in it. Um, and uh, I'm going to put a little uh, paint here in the foreground, um, probably some of this ochre color. Um, and uh, I want the foreground to have a little water in it, so let me uh, just spray a few things here on the foreground to get some water going. <clears throat> and I'm going to come back with my ochre and just sort of put in some, some big strokes in here. Um, this is all, it's really a, a grass-like covering that they had out there. Um, again, it wasn't very green. Um, it was uh, more of a yellowish color, I guess. Uh, but it was, like I said, it was March. And uh, let me just sort of wet this down and get some uh, stuff going on here. Um, there's some places back in here where I, that kind of shows through from behind the building on the other side. So I'm just uh, throwing in big, big brush strokes, big stuff here that uh, I don't want it to be too descriptive. It's just sort of a, a basic covering right now to get some uh, water on the canvas. Uh, or on the, on the paper, sorry. I do paint oil paintings as well, so sometimes I mix up canvas and paper. And if you watch me on both of my video uh, streams, you would know that. Um, North Carolina, hi Kim, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, okay, so I have this house now. Um, it's, it's an off-white. Um, it has a bit of a a tone to it. Um, I think it's probably the reflectivity of the of the the ground and the uh, the grasses around it as much as anything, because it was a gray day out there uh, when we were doing this. Um, so I'm just going to try to put in. It's another color here that uh, I use this uh, raw sienna. Um, it's it's a little bit different color than ochre, and it doesn't have as much of the uh, um, it's, it's not as opaque. Ochre tends to be a little bit semi-opaque. Um, so I'm just going to get a little bit of this in my brush and just see how it works on this. See if I can get just a little bit of this yellow going on here. I don't want it to be totally yellow. I just want it to have a little bit of this coloring on it. Very, very light. Um, Maybe too much, uh, but let me just wet it down a little bit more here and put just little touches of color in here to uh, warm it up. Like I say, it was a cold day, it was a gray sky, and uh, just want to uh, warm this thing up just ever so slightly. I'm not even sure, I guess you can see that. I, I have a monitor here behind me that I can look on and look and see what uh, what you see and uh, hopefully it's uh, not too um, too hard to see but this will just sort of warm it up 
very very light just uh, mostly mostly water very light tone in these paints almost almost nothing going on in this paint here and I might as well put that on this building in the back because it's going to be darker it's going to be a darker brown so I'll just throw some of that over here as well uh, so I'm just kind of getting the whole canvas almost or the whole uh, paper covered with almost the first coat of paint here, or first uh, wash if you want to call it that. Um, it is going to be a little darker in here. So let me just darken it up just a tad. And a beautiful color to work with that is this, uh, you pick a, a bit of a a violet, this uh, permanent violet bluish, makes great for shadows and things like that. We know we got shadows going on in here, so I'm just going to pop some of this in right now. Make it a little darker while I'm while I got the while I got the paper fairly wet. And over here we got some more. I'm using a big one-inch brush. Uh, So just not a lot, but just enough to sort of change the tone in there, make it a little darker, so you know that uh, that might be a shadow of some kind. Um, pick up a little bit of that and uh, maybe start on this roof line here with some, uh, the roof is almost white as the, uh, in the photograph, the roof is as white as the sky. Um, and I don't want that has to be darker so you can see it. So I'm just popping in a few of these colors here, whatever I have on my brush. Change the color, change the value. Uh, and just sort of let it run light. Something like this. Give a nice ton tonal change to that. And we have also then this area back here. This is another roof back here. I'm going to put that in, see if I can make that darker yet, maybe. A roof there, and then that roof actually comes down and yeah, wraps around. Okay, so Get that going, uh, put a little more dark in here and see if I can put a, a shadow in, sort of in this area, make this a little darker even. Um, all right, a uh, similar type of thing here around this. like that, a little bit too abstract. It's running down in, so let's just blend it together. Let it, let it work, it's, it's way through there. All right, um, this other part of the roof here, part of it's really obviously a different color. Just make it something like this let it run together leave a little bit of a gap there for uh, show some highlight in it um, just lighten it up pull it down let that color change get a variation variega variegated or a, a color that goes from dark to light light to dark Warm to cool, cool to warm. Uh, throw a little bit of warm in here, uh, along with the cool. They uh, that tends to give a sort of excitement to the painting. It uh, 
makes it um, have some real life when you mix these warm and cool colors. So I just let that kind of go and uh, maybe just a little more dark up here. I'm using neutral tint for some of this. Um, basically using the neutral tint, of the violet, um, raw sienna and a little bit of ochre so far that's all I've used um, so I just want to put in some edges on this roof line here and uh, let it sort of work together with what's underneath it as a shadow like that Come over here and do something similar to this Eve to make it as sharp as I can there. Be a little too dark. Oh well. That's uh always keep a I always keep a paper towel in my left hand. Uh, it's always good for blotting or going back in and uh, fixing a problem. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Um testing this paper to see how dry it is. I think I'm gonna come back and put some of that those dark green trees in. I want to pick up some of my uh, Kubrick green and some of my sap green. Fill those together and see if I can get a good dark out of that. Maybe throw in a little bit of uh, my violet and even a little, a little bit of my neutral tint. Okay, so I'm getting a green of a green that's got sap green, violet and neutral tint and what I really want to do is really highlight this edge of the roof again so that it really stands out. I want to make it like that. I'll make these trees sort of go up and fade into the sky a little bit. Give me some broken edges up there. I'm using the back of the brush Leave some air holes in there. Change the color, change the this uh, neutral tint and and uh, Kubrick green really give a nice dark, nice dark color here. So pull it down like this. Come inside around that corner like that. And uh, I'm going to even throw some yellow back on top of this to kind of give me a lighter color green for some. Uh, I'm getting, I'm just mixing here on my uh, palette and getting uh, some of the tops of these are a little bit lighter. Uh, so. things that are sort of out in front are a little bit lighter. So let's see if we can mix that up a little bit, put in some more darks. Um, I see I could probably use my big uh, quill mop brush with that. Um, but um, I get stuck on one brush sometimes. I'll do a whole painting sometimes with maybe a big brush like this and a, uh, a rigger or something. Um, we got another roof line over here I'm trying to uh, identify. Right here there's a bit of a roof line. Try to get it with this big brush instead of getting out another one. All right um, I'm getting the Kind of getting the colors I want in there, getting some nice variation. I have some nice holes for the birds and uh, have some nice uh, dry edges there that make it look like it's, those are leaves sticking up out. 
darker here in some areas, a little more bright in here. Okay, that's pretty close to uh, what I want to try to get. I may put a few uh, tree trunks in there to fix it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to go over to the other side now while I've got my got all this green in my brush and see if I can put in a few over here. I don't want these to be exactly the same color. I want, them to, I want something to change. I want them to be lighter, greener, uh, something. I'm going to put some more yellow in my... Uh, mixture here and uh, see if I can so these are definitely on the back of the building so I don't want them to overlap so I want them to sort of come up here and do this put some nice green in there like that back with some darker colors like this let them sort of fade. If I can outline this roof back here again, you will see it much better. And there's actually a roof, another part of the roof that goes this way. So let's put that in. There's another building back there actually uh, that I didn't... Uh, see, I'm not using a brush like this. I'm sort of using the back of it and uh, just letting it, this rough, this cold pressed paper 300 pound cold pressed paper will take the uh, the bumps in the paper will take paint off your brush so I'm letting it do that um, trying to keep from putting too many specific brush strokes in here but uh, I want it to kind of look like that I may want a little more dark in there pick up a little of my violet and maybe throw some of that in some places here like this, yeah, maybe a few more on the other side, right in here, maybe some places. And because that's all wet, this will sort of soften up, up and uh, um, blend in with what's there so you don't have uh, a lot of hard edges. Okay, um, that's pretty good. Get some of that color over here. All right, um, so far I've just only used this one inch flat brush, folks. Um, and um, I think that's pretty decent. I see a little triangle here I want to get rid of. Try to eliminate geometric shapes in your paintings if you can. Leave them all abstract. See these, this area that you can see through here, that's all, that's not a triangle, it's not a circle, it's not a square. Um, it has a nice, uh, abstract quality about it and that makes the most pleasing objects on your painting. I still, th that does look a little like a triangle right there. Uh, now that I look at it again in the monitor. So let's just put a couple of indentations in it and uh, leave it like that. I want to come back and grab me a flat brush here, or a round brush, and pick up some of my browns and see if I can throw in a few tree trunks in there while I got this uh, sort of wet. I want the tree trunks to sort of blend and not uh, not stand out. I don't want to paint them overly positive. I want to paint them so that they sort of softly blend in into some of this. Uh, that way they can go behind it uh, in some areas. Probably can't even see that now that I look on the monitor back here. Uh, Maybe some things over here. Um, the other cool, cool tool to use is a, is a uh, razor blade, or you can use the back of a credit card or the edge of a credit card. But you can come into these when there's just the right amount of wetness. You can come in and put in a a scrape like that, and if the paint is a certain amount of wetness, you can scrape it away and it'll stay white. If it's dry you won't get anything if it's too wet it fills back in and covers itself up so let me just see what I can do over here all right I don't know if you can see that but that makes a nice tree trunk there's another one here put one right in there like that maybe put a couple up here like that so we do see now 
some I just sort of highlighted those tree trunks in there and they stand out but I just did that with a little flat razor blade but you can use a credit card the thing with a credit card is it has a, a wider edge these these razor blades like this have a nice sharp point you can scrape out paint uh, you can get a very nice uh, looking tree trunk if you do it at the right time that's the that's the uh, secret all right we're making good progress here we've been going about 25 minutes so let's see if we can uh, put some more touches on this I think I'm going to pretty much have all the green I need I'm going to clean this palette out with some of this paint now and get get rid of a lot of this green I'll keep a little bit because I may want a little bit more in the uh, foreground when I touch it up at the end of the painting this painting we're painting in landscape format which you know is uh, wider than it is tall the painting underneath it for Bass Harbor is going to be a portrait format which means it's taller than it is wide so I've got part of the part of this covered below here to keep me from splashing paint on the paper that's below here now this is a good time to pull out my half inch flat brush I have a whole lot of, of uh, windows that I need to put in so I'm gonna start working on those get myself a little bit of a black blackish purplish color here and see what happens if I start putting these in like this it's a window a couple of windows here like that and it just happened to be just about the right size for what I'm trying to do here and to not make them so perfect um, some of these you want to be perfect because you're matching an architectural thing or something but you can sort of just use your finger and use a paper towel um, just rough them over just a little so they have a little bit of texture in them instead of just um, pure color they look like they really look like they're uh, manufactured which they are in real life but on a, on a building like this in a painting you want to give it some some sort of uh, painterly quality I guess um, and so just sort of rough them up just a little um, in here I've got some other windows that are kind of tall and narrow a couple of them uh, down there I put the door back in they actually had the door covered up in this building uh, so that you couldn't really uh, couldn't really get inside but uh, put a couple more windows in here uh, and this door I put a little a couple of windows in it uh, so that it, it kind of looks more like it did probably before they renovated it and fixed it all up um, and uh, kind of like that um, there is a bit of a shadow on the side of this uh, chimney here so I'm going to darken it just slightly try to stay within my color palette as much as possible but I want to try to make this whole side just come down like this that like this okay now you can see that chimney um, this little window needs to be a little more a little better some of these I may come back and make them a little darker instead of lighter because um, I want them to sort of highlight either an architectural element or uh, indicate something in the window that you may be looking at or something like that um, not everywhere but just a few places give them a little bit of different uh, different tone all right now we got a door over here um, that little door I think I'm just gonna is that dry yeah let's sort of put a little bit of a no I don't want that much let's put a little tone in it over it so that it stands out that there's a door there all right now 
where am I? Oh, I got some windows up here. Um, those are going to be a little tougher because they're too wide for my for my brush. So let me go get a this number four round. See if I can put in a few windows in here like this, like that, and there's even a couple over here like this, right in here that and there's a couple more over here I don't even think I had these in the sketch over here on the right I'm not sure uh, but they're there all right now okay I think I want to put a little more of a, a shadow here from this um, from whatever Sun that I'm creating as a result of my like this I want this to go like that is a nice uh, looking shadow. Um, this whole area over here is should be a little more in shadow because I think the sun is more coming from my left. So let me just see if I can put a little wash over here. Pick those up maybe like that. I just lost my windows over there. Okay. Um, this is also a, an important thing to remember when you have a building that goes out of the sun, even if you don't have a whole lot of sun, um, this edge right here that I'm painting, um, it's called the change plane accent, which means, and I did the same thing here with this chimney, um, it means as that surface goes out of the light, that that edge needs to have a, sh a shadow on it and the, the official term for that is change plane accent probably doesn't mean anything to you probably don't need to know that you're not going to be taking a test but um, it is something that uh, artists who take classes and, and get college degrees and stuff they they tend to uh, know those kinds of things so it's kind of neat to uh, think about what that is. I really made this window a little too big over here. Let's see if I can get some of that graphite up so that it doesn't... Uh, I saw a lot of pencil lying in here and I didn't want all that. Usually when I put paint over it it's hard to get these lines up. They almost never come up all the way but um, it seems like they're coming up pretty good today. Uh, Okay, so there's a, uh, a bit of a chimney on the top of this thing that's really hard to see. Um, I'm going to give it a, a little bit of a color, a reddish color that's got some gray it down a little bit with my green using my red uh, lizard and crimson here. You put all this green in it, it grays it down. Um, and I just want to put in a needs to be brighter than that a little bit. I'm going to put a little my CAD yellow in there and see if I can brighten it up. Okay, there's the chimney. It was a lot, lot smaller than that in the photograph. Um, I have another red thing here I want to put in. It's a little pump sitting back here on the back of the porch that uh, is red. And I'm going to see if I can just put him in here. A little pump must have been how they got their water built their house over a, uh, a well and uh, would just pump the water on their back porch cool all right there we go everybody still with me looks like we're having some fun here um, put a little bit of a value change on this part of the uh, house here to show that there is a, a difference <coughs> there. All right, uh, we have a bunch of little dark things under the house as well, so <coughs> let me go get some of that. A uh, little bit of more of the same color that I was using for those windows, except I want to make this darker because it is really, really pretty dark. I'm not, I think I may have to use my 
flat or my round brush here because those things are so small and we're painting in a shadow here underneath the house that um, sort of outlines these bricks and blocks that are holding this thing up off the ground. So what you're seeing is you're looking through underneath this building and you're seeing what's on the other side of it back there. So sort of outlining All right, <laughs> come back, we got some more over here, just like this. There, there's actually a, a bush of some kind there. Over here we've got more. So we're just showing the understructure here of what we got. Um, this building is sitting on blocks or something and uh, sort of ties it to the ground here. Some more bushes over this way. There we go, let's do this. That, I think there's some even some dark on this side just a little bit. Okay, so that's the underside of this building. You, know, you can kind of see through it. Okay, um, there's a little bit of a dark shadow over here. Like this. These are stairs that go across over there, back here on this side. I'm just going to kind of put in the, the green steps here that sort of uh, are outlined by the uh, hard for you to see, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, okay. So there's a couple of railings over there and that sort of thing. So. Don't need to worry too much with that. Matter of fact, I don't want to even highlight that all that much. Um, all right, what else we got? Uh -huh. Maybe a couple more dark. Hit these windows just a, another to show some shadow, a little bit of shadow on the uh, left side because if the sun's coming from our left, there might be a little bit of a shadow on these windows like right like that. It would be across the top like that. Uh, it helps make some three-dimensional this to these windows. All right, so much for that. Let's see. Um, really getting out of this area where I'm going to have to start working on these uh, posts around this uh, porch. I do have some more green here. Let me get this green. This, there's a base that fits under here that's got, uh, it's the bottom of the uh, porch deck. Um, it runs all the way out like this and then it comes back into the steps over here. There is a uh, dark. Got lost here. There we go. There's a show that post there. There we go. Some of this is what you're seeing from the other side. Some of it's here on this side. Yeah, these, uh, this green porch base goes all the way across here comes out on the other side, right there. A lot of little things going on here that's 
probably hard for you to see. Um, but I want to try to get as much of that in as I can. All right, let's uh, take a look at this building over here on the right. And this is uh, <clears throat> just uh, another cabin. It's sort of an, uh, historic cabin that's sitting back here behind this building. So I just want to put in some things here, which I just realized I painted the roof. It's okay. Um, underneath it, there's a lot of dark. Part of my dark shape is back in here. Put this over like this here. I'm all the way down. There we go. I've got the so it may be hard for you to see what I'm painting here, but um, painting around. these posts here and actually there's a building behind it so all right um, just a few more darks on this right side over here So it's just a very, there's a post in there that's hard to see, but I'm going to leave it kind of like that. There's a door there. I'm going to leave it like that for now. All right. So now I can see the other post on the other side of this building here. All right. Let's uh, see if we can get in and put in some of these, um, these spindles. Between these spindles, I want to get back to some of my uh, yellowish, color that's a little darker than what's there and I'm just going to see I think maybe my white brush might work at least at this point um, let me see if I can do that here how are we doing on time 42 minutes oh, we're not doing too bad and that's too wide I'm going to have to make it do with my half inch brush so I'm using uh, raw sienna with a little bit of this uh, violet in it and uh, I'm going to try to make that darker. It's definitely going to be darker than what's behind it or what's uh, what's here. So I'm just going to try to make these little spindles stand out by making a little bit of a darker color that looks like it might fit the the background here. So I'm negatively painting around these spindles. There we go. Okay, it looks like there might be a, a fence there. A couple of things that come down here, maybe. Hold it up. And actually, the photograph I had a, it was a big, uh, a big uh, panel here that described what this house was. Gave the name and when it was built and bunch of the history. But I removed that sign and let it be uh, the way it was before. Okay, that uh, screen color needs to sort of fill that out a little bit more there. I think I'll fill this out too. Okay, I hope my head's not in your way. I bet it is. Um, I have three cameras going here, folks. Um, one is on my palette. One is 
straight on and one is on the side over here so when I re-edit these videos I, uh, I'll come in and uh, fix these things where I'm standing in front of the, the uh, camera and take them out of the final video. I don't like to see that. That's why I try to have more cameras available. Um, put in this little sh post here. There's a post here that's similar. Putting these in with a round brush. Hopefully you can see. Get it too dark. I have to lighten it up. Put some more water in it. Pull it down. I just kind of messed that one up pretty good. One off of the yeah. That's good. I can have a lost and sort of a lost and found edge here. I want this side to be lighter. So let's take the towel, pull it down. It's darker right now. Come on. There, I got some water in it. Now I think you should be able to. All right. Um, I've got more, a little bit more of this dark to put in here to show these banisters on the steps. That and then there's a few over here like this. Okay, those little angles tell you something going on there. Come back and put a little bit of my color on this thing here. That little color on it this way. Um, and there are there are green bushes and stuff down here underneath that. Uh, I can highlight. I'm gonna. Well, I got this. I'm gonna put a few more darks around some of these architectural elements here and in the inside to make it to uh, make you realize this is a a door back there that I have. Pull it over this way. All right, that sort of does a little better job of explaining it. Um, I think I left out a section that had some uh, some spindles are missing here. Actually, you can see through some of these to the other side of the porch. So I'm just going to put a couple of those in. Back there, there was a few here. I don't know if you're able to see that or not, but... Uh, there we go. All right, so that tells you it's a nice porch with a lot of spindles and stuff going on. Um, steps coming down here. Let's put a few of those in like this. They sort of lay out like that with a little tread on top. All right, let's come back and start throwing in some some grasses and stuff. There's actually a walkway that goes out here, but uh, get me some more grasses, get me some more uh, this stuff. There's a bunch of bushes and things in here. I'm using my flat brush here. If I just throw them out there like that, they'll kind of tell you there's some bushes that are lining the walk like this. There's some bushes that go along here. There's one on this corner here. I'm going to make it darker than it really is. That's not very dark. Get some more dark in there, folks. Uh, so we're just throwing this in. Tie it together with some of this other stuff. Let's throw in some other things that kind of make it look like we've got some some green going on. This is just sort of abstract nothingness right now. There's uh, really no reason to do much else with this. Um, um, maybe I'll put just a little bit of a shadow in here to kind of indicate there's a little bit of sun that's 
kind of causing a little bit of a shadow so let's darken it down just a little maybe like this over here even like this okay that kind of adds the dark um, not much else I need to do probably just a little calligraphy type things here maybe add in a another uh, shadow or two um, what else let me look at that let me step back and take a look and see I think that's a pretty good rendering um, probably could have done a few things a little better but um, I think we've got pretty good pretty good job here for about an hour or so 50 minutes um, I put those put those paints on there I'm gonna let it just touch them now and just sort of take some of that off it's not quite as obvious um, get my script liner out and uh, see if there's any other calligraphy I might put in there might be some things here that kind of highlight the underneath part of this um, roof over here do the same kind of thing um, up here put in a few things that indicate the roof goes on here there's a roof here roof goes this way on here there's a roof that actually goes this way here these are little things that help tell the help tell the rest of the story and there's a couple of pillars back here I'm going to put in Um, what else I can there's a couple other roofs over here that sort of have some things going on and this one back here actually has some there's some uh, eh, it's not necessary to do all that but uh, certainly uh, you can uh, put a little more dark here to highlight this uh, pillar that's holding up that part all right um i won't belabor this i've gone about an hour on it i think that's plenty so let's block print our name and get on with the next one all right any questions i haven't been looking here hello from cologne well welcome westchester pa thank you for doing this Oh, okay. Possible moves the palette to the side. Yeah, I don't know when you put that on there, David, but uh, <laughs> I uh, sometimes get uh, preoccupied with my painting and what I have going out over my stream. I have the palette and I can turn it on and off and I don't move it over sometimes. But in, if you come back and look at the final video after I edit it, um, it will be corrected because I go in and I have a camera that's dedicated to my palette. And uh, so I will... Uh, fix anything like that it might just be a little difficult for you to see right now let me put a few um, things that look like there's some boards to show you the way this house is framed uh, there's some boards that go this way here and there totally forgot about looking at my computer screen over here louisa from south africa welcome Olivia from Waterford, Ireland. Welcome. Wow. Great. Great to have such an international audience. All right. I hope you like this painting. Uh, I'll stand back and look at it for a second and see if there's anything else I could do. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty well done right now for a 60-minute painting. And uh, I have another one I'm going to try to do in about as much time. This... Uh, so what I'm going to do now, if you need to take a break uh, and uh, get a coffee or get some water, uh, I'm going to take a little drink of water, but I'm going to clean my palate, change my dirty water, get some clean water up here, and uh, pull this painting off and get my next one. My next one's already sketched, so all I have to do is just rip this off. and. Uh, you can watch me. I'll probably cut some of this out of the final video, but uh, you get to see it all here firsthand. My little paper below here that's got uh, covered up my painting below here, my sketch below. Um, probably can't even see what I'm doing. Back up and show you. I'm going to have to 
back my cameras up so that I can get the full land, uh, portrait painting ready. So there's the final of this one and uh, I may do a little touch up but I think that's pretty close to what I wanted to show you. Hope you like that. Hope you give it a try. Um, what I have on here now is my uh, sketch for Bass Harbor Lighthouse and uh, I want to get my I have another camera I have to adjust, so bear with me for just a second. I'm going to go over here and uh, uh, zoom him out just a little so that I make sure I have my good side camera working. Since I don't have a cameraman or cameramen. All right. Um, I want to go back over to the computer and I want to change my water first. Excuse me. Some more water here. Okay, there we go. And uh, throw my brushes in there, let them be staying soaking. All right, um, let me go back to the computer and show you the Bass Harbor. There's not too much to show on it, but I do want to uh, uh, show you what I did here. All right, I'm back at my computer. Now I'm going to uh, bring up my Bass Harbor. Uh, photo. This is the original photo. Uh, I told you uh, Deborah Craig Shields made this photo available for from for Photos for Artists on the Facebook page. Um, I cropped it down very slightly. I just took a little bit off the bottom, slightly some off of the top. Uh, put a grid on it. It doesn't fit the 4x5 grid all that well, of course. Um, it looks like a 3x4 grid. And, uh, but anyway, I used that. I did do a value map. Um, and I'm going to try to add some mist and mistiness to this. Um, see, see how that works. And I have my sketch here, which uh, you probably have seen if you've been watching. If you were watching earlier, um, before I started, the sketch was up there. Okay, um, let me throw this back to my palette now and take off the sketch and uh, I think we're ready to go. I hope you can see that. I hope you can hear me. Olivia, thank you for your comment. All right, um, so this one is going to be, I don't know how quickly we can do it, but it's certainly uh, something that can be uh, done very fast, maybe. I don't want to get too hopeful that I'm going to do it really fast because I want to do a good job. Uh, these rocks will be a bit of a challenge, as rocks usually are. So let me get my new value map and painting up the top. Um, so now you see, this is the way I start out. My photo for my original uh, photo here, my value map over there. Um, I refer to those um, while I'm painting so that it helps me uh, try to keep the values close to uh, where I want them. All right, so this has, uh, it's really the lighthouse is sort of hidden behind a bunch of trees and there's there's various paintings I've seen of this uh, Bass Harbor lighthouse and uh, some of them show the whole lighthouse, some of them show them show it sort of buried. I'm going to try to get make this sort of uh, really misty here in the background. Uh, lighthouse itself is uh, pretty dark, at least at the top, it's dark. Um, and the building, again, this is another white building with sort of a white background, so I'm going to have to change this. Since this happens to be in Maine, I'm going to make it uh, a little darker and uh, make it more um, more violet. Let me see, where'd my palette go here? Oops, there it is. Um, I've got you guys to see my palette that's on real time here. I'll move this over so I have a little more room. Should be able to handle that pretty well. All right, let's uh, see if we can get going. I'm going to get some clear water and just start with uh, some clear water and wet the top of this down. Um, The 
this 300 300 pound paper takes a lot of uh, water absorbs a lot of water um, and many times I don't get enough water on here so I uh, gonna try to uh, get plenty of water on this thing this time we'll do a, a bit of this wet and wet it's a bit of a challenge to do wet and wet with my style of painting because I have my easel setting up upright here vertical so everything runs most artists paint with a, an easel that's tipped down with maybe 15 degree of an angle um, flat they paint watercolors flat many do uh, there are several that paint vertically like this but uh, I don't know if there's anybody doing it live and trying to react to the paper and uh, water and paint like I do. I don't know. All right. Again, folks, if you have any comments or questions, I'll try to be more conscious of my computer here on my left elbow and um, pay attention. Um, and I'll try to keep the palette uh, for you viewing live. I'll try to keep that palette nicely visible and not covering up everything that I'm painting. All right, now this sky is going to be a little bit of a grayish blue, sort of a steel gray. Um, like that. Give me some more paint in here. I'm doing a little alizarin, a little bit of uh, ultraviolet. A good bit of water. Um, got a nice hair up there. Get rid of it. Um, again, this is a photo that had no uh, no sky in it, other than just pure white. So I'm going to try to uh, add a little coloring to this sky. Maybe make it a little bit uh, dark, darker. Certainly darker than. Uh, it started out. Um, it's got to come all the way down. I want to bring it down. It's got to come behind this stuff. It's got to come around here. Um, a lot of water so it runs very nicely. Um, you see this rough edge right there that I got. That means the paper's dry. I try to keep the water off of the, the lighthouse here and I'll just paint around it. Um, so that's all sky. It's all sort of a grayish, cool, cool gray. I put that alizarin in it. Alizarin and, and uh, my uh, blue up here there. Where is it? Okay, there we go. So I left a couple of clouds up here. Not too much uh, on a kind of a gray day. Uh, let me come back and put a little bit of my uh, neutral tint in here to see if I can sort of add a few clouds maybe over this way. These again aren't in the photo. Um, I'm just sort of ad-libbing here. Um, uh, behind this lighthouse I want to have just a little bit of This is going to be darker, but behind the lighthouse, I want it to be. Uh, I want to have the sky back there. So let me just color, paint that in. Like that. All right. So I have some variation in the sky. I have one dark corner and one lighter corner. Um, like that. This has to be painted over. It's going to be a. Actually, I could just make it all. It's too dark. Um, it's going to all be darker than the sky, so I might as well just paint over the whole thing and forget about it. And stop trying to protect that. I want to protect. Actually, this is even darker down here. It really gets right in this area where I want to protect the white. So I want to try to keep the peak of this white, and I'll put sky color everywhere else. There we go. All right, so I can still see the, the sky color through there. I'm going to have some background in these trees because I'm going to be leaving some holes in there. 
it's a mist. Um, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> this is fast so far, isn't it? All right, um, I want to uh, now try to put a few foggy trees in the background. They were there weren't they weren't in the photograph that way, but I'm going to get some neutral tint here, a little bit darker. While that paper is good and wet, I'm going to come in with some of this paint and see if I can put a few. I don't know if it's going to, it's maybe too wet. If it is, I'll just blot it out and come back later. But um, So these trees are back, they're going to be behind and going to give us sort of a foggy backdrop, I hope. Um, you see how that, bl how that blends out with all the water that's in that paper and the other paint, it just diffuses very nicely, which is some of the effect I'm trying to get with this. Um, that's why I do it now instead of trying to wet it and do it later. Um, well, maybe I could put a couple over here. I don't know. These weren't in the photograph either, but let me see if I can put a couple of dark, darker uh, trees in this area. Maybe there's a couple that stick up over here. I don't know. Uh, we're kind of making this up as we go. Um, so I just want to make it a soft scene, even though it's a cool scene, it's sort of foggy. I think of Maine having cool weather a lot of the, a lot of the time. This is in Acadia National Park. Um, it's part of Acadia National Park. This uh, lighthouse has been around since somewhere around 1876, I think it was built. Um, so uh, just popping in a few things here to help blow, expand this and give me some background to paint over. I'm going to paint over this with some other colors, but I want to get some background in there. All right, um, let me stop. Um, should I? I think I can either stop and dry this. I hate to pull my hair dryer out and blow this thing dry because it drives you crazy and it uh, drives me crazy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and down here in this area where I've got rocks, I'm going to put a, a first coat, under, under coat I guess you might call it, um, down here. Uh, get some of this um, raw sienna again, same color we used in the other painting. Uh, but I'm going to throw some of this in here and let it be um, starting to work on these rocks. I'll come back and we'll go over this with some other really dark colors, but I wanted to put this base in and I can do that while the top is drying a little bit. And uh, so let's just get that in. Um, water making it uh, okay so let's just leave it at that um, there's a lot of grasses and stuff in here I'm gonna I think I might have stopped and dry it folks I won't I'll just have to I'll be making a worse mess if I keep trying to go back over that so I'm going to turn my microphone off so I don't blow your ears out and I'll dry this and be right back the microphone is going to go off okay I should be back on you should be able to hear me fine now um, another little tip test test your paper at the back of your hand and not the front you have more oils on the tips of your fingers than you do on the back so it's always a good idea to test it with the back of your hand if it feels uh, cool uh, or damp, you know it's not dry. This is still kind of cool to my hand. If it feels warm, room temperature is probably dry or very close to dry. So 
Uh, it's a nice tip to know how wet your paper is, is to always try to uh, use the back of your hand. David Green, you visited Acadia in the 80s. It's an artist heaven. Yeah, that, that's for sure. I'm just thankful for people that uh, take photographs and put them out on uh, our Facebook page and they don't require any compensation for us to use them. They don't mind if we paint them and, and uh, even sell the paintings. It's a sort of a commercial free thing. It's just to help artists have a lot of photos to work from. So I like that. Okay, so now we're going to come in and I'm going to start putting in some of these trees on the right side. We're going to work our way down uh, to uh, the building and then I'll do a little detailed painting in the, the lighthouse itself and then uh, the rocks. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do now. Let's see. Now, do I need a big brush or a little brush? A little brush would be nice, but I'm going to try to work with a big brush as much as I can. It's always a good thing to try to uh, work with the largest brush you can use and still get the job done. That's uh, almost a direct quote from Tony Couch. They ask him about work painting with big brushes. What size brush do you use? He always says, the biggest brush you can use and still get the job done. So that's a good tip. I like Tony Couch. I've gone to four or five workshops with him and uh, unfortunately he's teaching less workshops these days than he used to. So I'm uh, hoping I can get another workshop in before uh, he re fully retires. Um, but I really like his work. Okay, so now I've got my mass of greens. I've used cupric green, sap green, um, violet, permanent violet, and my uh, a little bit of my uh, neutral tint. And I've got some yellow here lying out that I can pull in and out as I need it. So I can get all kinds of colors, all kinds of different values. As long as I have enough here to work with, um, I should be able to paint this pretty big area with this big brush, leaving a few air holes and uh, and we'll just see what happens here. Um, let's go blam, like this. Like that. I'll put some more in here. Uh, really dark, that uh, violet and makes it nice and dark. Put a few. So there's a big little spindly thing here that kind of comes out, down a little wider. Come back, get some more paint, get heavier paint. Um, So the thing that makes paintings really sing is when you get some really dark darks in them and make those contrast against some of the light lights. Usually they say the eye goes to the darkest dark against the lightest light. So when you have a lot of darks and lights. Um, somebody looks at your painting, they're going to probably look at the uh, wherever it's darkest dark against the lightest light. I'm changing up the value here, giving myself a little bit of the, threw a little yellow in there and I'm going to come back and throw a little of the dark on top of that. And that gives another, you see what that does for the depth? It adds something really nice to this painting. Um, here, Actually, these things really cover this part of the lighthouse. Come down here, got a lot more down here going on. It's a whole bank of trees up here, so I'm really trying to get as much of it put in as I can. Big brush strokes, dark shapes, intermingled with light shapes. Pull that yellow in and throw a little bit of it on here. Again, it lightens things up.
So let's just get this in in a big hurry. I want to come down to the rocks are right in here. My bushes, I still got to come down a ways. So let's get in here and put some more. This, see, using this big brush, you can do so much faster. If I'd use that little brush, I'd be painting forever with those little, with that little brush. So just throw them in, use the back, use the side of the brush, back of the brush. Um, we're going to come down here and, and merge it in with some grasses that are below here. Um, put a few trunk-like things in here. Um, you don't have to paint every trunk and every branch. What tells the viewer what this is, you've heard me say it before, it's what's on the edges. So. If we show them at the edges that this is a thing that looks like a, a pine tree, it can't be anything else. Definitely can keep keep that uh, distinct from from the uh, building behind it. More darks. So let's move over here to this side now and see. I just keep going. Same type stuff. I may change the color slightly just so that it has some variation. I don't want both sides to look identical even though these trees are probably all identical trees. Um, but we're going to just put in a things like this, more dark over here, run them off the paper. There's another big fat one right in here. Actually goes all the way up to there. Um, Right there, put in some. See what you can do with a big, wide, one inch brush? Kind of amazing. Get some more color in here. This actually comes down, goes in front of this building as well. See, that, it helps, helps me nestle this building the uh, lighthouse back in behind these trees when you put this all these branches in front of it um, all of a sudden you know that building's behind there I could probably just leave that building white and uh, not even have to do much else with it throw in a little more some lighter colors in here change it up a little bit uh, this comes down where's my oh that comes all the way down actually it goes all the way down doesn't it wow yeah, well, let's get some more in here. This is a big part of the painting right here, all this, uh, all these trees. Probably could have even used a bigger brush, now that I think about it. Put in big uh, swatches here. Save room for a post right here. Comes down this way. Um, very, very dark. Come back and get some neutral tint. Some violet. Um, this actually outlines this post here. There's a post here that Sort of a barricade, I guess, to keep people from falling over the rocks. Never know what some people are going to try to do. Oh, we have to protect them from themselves. A lot of dark paint here, a lot of dark paint. Uh, I think I'm going to fill this in just a little more here. Um, a lot of air holes. I'm probably not leaving as many air holes as it's in the original painting, but we're trying to uh, not duplicate exactly the photograph. We're trying to give you a feeling of this rocky terrain and um, 
This comes all the way down. These things all the way come into here. There we go. All right. Now you see the post. I didn't paint the post, but you see the post. Okay, let's see, let's pull some of these up here like this. We got some grasses that are coming up. I'm going to put some other colors in there to tie those grasses together. Um, may get my little uh, fancy. That's too dry over there. Here's what happens when it's too dry. Nothing happens. It's too dry. Over here, it's probably just about right in some areas. I'll see if I can get a little bit of a scrape out. You see that? Probably can see that. It's a little drier at the top than it is at the bottom, but uh, if I come in here at the right time, I can show you those trunks. So that's a neat trick. Get yourself a little <clears throat> razor blade. I don't know who uses those kind of razor blades anymore. They use them in things to clean uh, window or to uh, scrape windows down. I know that. I bought a bunch of them at one of our big box stores here and uh, I used them when I was teaching classes regularly. I would give them out to people that took my classes and it's part of the supplies I handed out. <clears throat> okay, let's put some more darks. This is getting too... See how it dried? It dried up at least 20% lighter. So I come back now and put in a few more darks over this, cover up some of the trunks, and uh, same thing over here, do the, this other set of trees. There's really a couple of set of trees here that have... Uh, so I'm painting, now I'm painting another layer actually. I, I'm, I have a, uh, a layer of trees behind. I have the, the ones, the really foggy ones in the distance. I have the ones here that I painted first and they've uh, lightened up to the point where it's uh, it looks like it's uh, lighter. It's a mid, sort of a mid value. And then I've got this all this dark value going on here. That's the beauty of watercolor. You can just sort of do these kind of things. You get these beautiful effects. You get nice depth. Uh, I really like painting with watercolor. All right, um, I've belabored this quite a bit. Um, maybe I'll get my little razor out here and see now, since I wet this down again, watch what happens. Now I have a, the ability to put a, another trunk in there uh, since I made it wet. All right, I don't want to do too much of that. It gets to be sort of a gimmick, gimmicky. Don't want to be gimmicky. Okay, folks, how are we doing? Um, so I've got my set of trees done. I've got some uh, grasses, sort of middle value grasses that go in here and then my rocks below and my uh, <clears throat> the details up there. So I think I'm about done with all of this really, really dark paint. So let me zap this out of my palette and uh, We'll keep going here. These kind of scenes are really fun to paint. I really enjoy this. All right, now we're ready for the next step, which Next step is I think I'm gonna work on this lighthouse and get it done. Get me some. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I want a round brush here. Let me think about this. I do have a round surface up there, <clears throat> so let's uh, try out some neutral tint. Maybe put a little, little bit of blue in it, maybe, and. A little bit of alizarin, see what 
I get out of that. I want it to still be cool, so I'm going to try this uh, neutral tint, Lizarin, and uh, and my blue, my ultra blue. So let's start up here. Um, it's another little trick. You can use your razor blade and use it as a as a painting knife, and you can just put that paint on there and do that. And all of a sudden, you've got a so instead of scraping paint out, I'm actually putting paint on. And I just use the edge of that blade, which is very very sharp, and uh, got it done pick up my other brush here get some other colors in here let's see we're gonna come down it's too dark but let's Um, underneath it is really really dark because it's in the shadow here this is really dark Okay, and then this is even darker here. This is uh, change the value slightly. not talking folks because I'm thinking thank you Olivia David Green looking great where do you get that palette this palette is a Sterling Edwards palette <clears throat> um, he, he paints with big brushes a lot and uh, he designed it to have big wells so that he could get his big brushes into those wells so he paints with brushes like this and they fit and that's a two inch two inch well right there so he can have his brushes he's got these extra extra um, places here to put uh, large amounts of paint I don't use it the same way he does but um, it's a nice palette I like it because it, it only holds a certain it doesn't hold you know 50 colors it only holds a certain number so you have to figure out how to 
make the colors you want with uh, the paints you have and uh, so I like it for that reason okay so now the underneath side I'm gonna maybe lighten that up a little bit see if that makes a little difference make it bluish So that's the underneath side and then we have this reddish colored I think that's the thing that the, the light is in that might be the back of the light for all I know um, here I've got a couple of colors in there I'm using cad red and a little bit of this uh, violet that's on my palette or change the color using a number four round brush <clears throat> trying to be very careful here darker on the edges lighter in the middle let it run together that okay I think that looks aligned hopefully I did my sketch right <clears throat> never know okay so we've got these little railings out here that are very very fine okay they actually wrap around. I didn't really show the wrap around, but um, I didn't really show up in the painting. But I'm going to kind of put that in now, so you can see that that does go around. It makes sense if you do that. Um, all right, put a little red in there. A few more darks in here. All right, now I think this building. I'm going to just hit a few of the spots and may leave it pretty white, I don't know. Is that I've got a dark thing in here that's part of a vent system or something like that all right um, and then we have some grays in this area <clears throat> there's a where it's connected together like that so if I uh, leave that let me see here I'm gonna take these his windows are kind of neat because one of the, I don't know if I can actually do it, but one of the windows was actually reflecting, looking through this window and out another window out the back. So <clears throat> I'll see if I can do that. I don't know, maybe, maybe too hard to do. Put this frame around the window. I mentioned Sterling Edwards as well. I uh, use his palette. Uh, he he uses my Mary Blue paints, which I've picked up on, and I use those. I like those. Um, they're very very transparent, <clears throat> and uh, I've also attended three of his workshops. I think, or maybe two. I forget. So let's see, I'm going to put in some windows here, three, there's three, one, two, there's 
There's six windows here above. All right, and um, there's two below, or I mean, one there, and then there's and a few light lines around here. Sort of outline those a little bit. Um, what goes on in this little corner is actually um, is a frame, almost like a frame around another window. And what's there is the window on the other side of the other side of the lighthouse. It's hard for you to see that, but up close it looks about right. Um, okay, so I may say that's just about what I need to do here. Could be a darker shadow here, maybe like that. All right, um, I think that's well nestled back in there. I may want to put a light glaze over that, a sort of a grayish glaze, but. Right now I'm going to stop with it <clears throat> and uh, get my old big old brush out again. And uh, I got paint all over my hand because I laid my hand on the uh, this area when it was wet. And uh, I actually did a little hand stamping right there with my uh, back of my hand. <coughs> Another way to paint, folks. All right, let's see if I can get this color we have here. I don't know what that thing is. Um, I'm going to use some of my purples and reds and throw in some of this um, raw sienna. Let's see if I can get a brownish color that's got some red in it and got some, uh, so that, got some blue in it. I'm just kind of destroying these colors and throwing in some of this lighter color. I'm going to even put some ochre in there to lighten it up maybe. All right, so I'm trying to get this color that uh, is in this painting with the, uh, all these grasses. Let's see, and there's grasses go down to, actually they go all the way down into here. They, they start down in here, these grasses. Um, um, another good brush, good, good thing to use this brush for. I want to show you this Sterling Edwards brush. Um, this thing is really great for these kinds of things. Um, putting all these colors together, trying to get a bunch in here, but look what happens when you use this brush that's got, it's a, a um, it's got these bristles that are uh, not typically a watercolor brush. You typically don't see this. Uh, watercolor brushes but um, you can make some very neat nice marks with it um, you can come down and get into here um, on the other side of this rock let me see there's some um, so these grasses sort of uh, it makes a really neat type of grass motion when you flick it up like that and let every one of these bristles um, actually become a paintbrush. And uh, let's see here, where are we going? I want to make sure I get down to the rock level here. I'm leaving some spaces in between. I'm going to come back and fill in some other colors, but uh, once I have these on, they'll dry and then I can come back and throw in some other types of colors, but this, uh, using a, a brush like this with bristles, hog hair bristles, uh, gives some really nice, okay, now I'll hold on that for a minute, um, but that, see how fast that worked, just, again, it's a, a big brush idea. Kim, thank you for your comments, appreciate it, thanks for being here.
All right, um, rocks. They still have this sandy looking color. Um, I'm going to try to use the biggest brush I can use again, which is my one inch flat. And see if I can make some of these rocks stand out. I'm actually, some of them are smaller. I may want to use my half inch now that I reflect on that. Get some darker browns. Uh, get my still to grain out. Get my burnt umber out. Get some uh, neutral tint that will give me some really dark colors. These rocks don't have a lot of dark in them, but I'm going to have to put some dark in to help you see them. Um, so what am I going to do? Right here I'm going to put in a little bit of a Going to paint around some rocks. Um, this is already dark on the other side of this rock here, but at the bottom, put something in the bottom. Um, like this, and you can um, bring these, connect these stuff into these grasses here like this. So one thing that I've learned about painting rocks is you don't want to paint every rock you see. Um, if you do, you'll end up driving the viewer crazy. Um, put in a few wet areas here and just let these things sort of run together. See how that changes. It, it, um, a good technique to paint rocks is to put some like water on top. Like I'm just putting clear water right here where this rock is. And watch what happens when I come back now and just put some color below it. It diffuses, picks up that color gives you a very nice looking top to that rock. Um, I can also do something with the spray bottle that also gives a nice uh, looking change to the, uh, the look of a rock. So I'm putting more grasses in here, putting in some dark uh, things. That this brush is actually splaying out so that it actually has uh, multiple bristles. See what happens if I put a little water on here like this. Put a few spots of water and uh, come back and throw in some rocks. See how it gives you the soft edges and the hard edges? That's what is nice. I'm not trying to paint a specific rock. I'm trying to give you the feeling that there's a lot of rocks in here and even though if I painted every rock I would drive you crazy um, by just making some of these um, brush strokes you can see the rocks Put some darks at the bottom to separate them, and uh, if the water's, if the, if the paper's wet, you will see them soften up and and uh, blend together. But um, if it's not, uh, you'll get nice hard edges. Like right here, I expect to get a hard edge, like right there. And. I want soft edges, I just take clear water and just paint in the middle. See how that works? If I come back over where I threw in these other, other grassy-like things, I end up with some interesting, if not 
perfect rock shapes and grass shapes. So you don't have to do a lot to tell people those are rocks, right? All right, a couple more things. I have this little uh, post here that I want to sort of gray down. It's a little bit too light, too white. Just put a little color on him like that. Automatically he's grayed down. Um, same color, probably. I could be using up here. Oops, that's got too much brown in it. Go back and get a more of my uh, neutral tint. A lot of water in that though. A lot of water. Yeah, that's. So just enough to get a little tone so that it's not all white. Um, leave a little white in there. I'm going to leave some in there so that it does stand out a little bit. So that's not just, I don't want to go from a solid white shape to a solid gray shape. That's kind of goofy. Um, up here I've got a little one that I want to highlight. However, underneath this section here that is not looking right. It looks like it's hanging out there ready to fall off. So let's fix it. Too dark. But using that paint and some water. All of a sudden I have something that looks like it might belong there. Throw a little dark in there and let it merge and mingle blend. All right. Folks, I think I'm going to call that quits. I am uh, i don't know how long I think we've probably spent 30 minutes on this, maybe. Uh, I don't know if there's any other calligraphy things I can do to enhance this a little bit. Still fairly impressionistic. Um, and uh, trying for, there's a lot of of uh, paint that's all chipped off of this building in this photograph, but um, I'm not going to paint all that stuff. Uh, I'll make sure I got a thing here. It looks like I've got a side of a building going down there. And uh, down here, it actually, one little thing underneath, there's another layer that goes across here like this. All right. <clears throat> That looks pretty, pretty good, I think. I've got trees in the background, trees in the middle ground, trees in the foreground. Um, I like the way it's looking. I hope you do too. All right, a little bit of, let's see if that's dry enough. It's not, it's not dry enough. I need paint that's not as wet. Okay, folks, I'm thinking I'm going to call that quits um, and say, zoom back and say thank you for joining me today. Hope you uh, enjoyed this. Hope you uh, give this a try. You've got all the reference materials you need on my website down below this uh, video. And uh, check out my Facebook page as well. Uh, and. Uh, Try to try to give this a, give this a try. See if you can do this. Uh, the sketches are pretty good. They're pretty detailed, and uh, you should uh, be able to copy those off of your computer and uh, get a good sketch to work from. So uh, I think with that said, uh, I don't have much more to tell you today, and I'm thankful for all of you that joined in. So until I see you next time, uh, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye bye. <laughs>